Welcome back to the channel. There is a large group of people that have been exiting new comic books, but they're sticking around with the hobby. They're going into back issues, and that can be treacherous water if you do not know what you're doing. So we brought in Doc, a guy that specializes in back issue comic books today, specifically collecting and making complete runs. How you doing, Doc? I'm great. This is this is a topic I love to talk about, and we haven't had a chance to talk about as much over the past year or so. So I welcome the opportunity to talk about it. And I'm speaking as somebody I, I very rarely sell comics. I, I'm in it from the complete buyer perspective, which I think might help you know some of the others here. I'm not really there's nothing for me to gain by giving you bad advice on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you go into your local comic shop and they have an enormous back issue collection. It could become a bit overwhelming. Do you think people should go in there and maybe key in on all the really expensive stuff or should they be looking for diamonds in the rough? Should they be looking to make to make complete runs of comic books they love growing up? What should they be keying on? Uh, look, I think the first thing you have to do is decide what you're in the back issue market for. Are you asked? Are you there just to read? Um in which case, then stick with digital, stick with trade paperbacks. You can find a lot of that stuff. But if you actually are in there for an investment, like, you know, you want to read the books, you want to love them, but you also want to invest, you got to figure out how much. Yeah. Like, are you looking for maybe f not necessarily flipping like out of like the dollar bins to five dollar books, you know, anything like that? I mean, you can do that. But I think the the big thing is figuring out where your focus wants to be. Do you want to just go and pick up every key book you possibly can. Do you want to read a run that you loved as a child or, you know, growing up, or do you want to read a run that you had heard about all the time when you were younger, but never got a chance to read? Um, do you want to just, you know, what's interesting about that doc. And like, let's yeah. say that you go in there and you're like, well, I have a budget and I'm not really buying new comics. So I'd like to invest them in back issue comics. You need to think about the run that maybe you want to complete. Because if you go in there and decide, I want every issue of Spider-Man, that's going to be a multi-million dollar investment just to complete it. Absolutely. So you got to think about how much is it going to cost just to get it done? And are you willing to invest that much dough into that kind of comic? Perhaps looking for specific runs or eras in some of the characters might be a better idea if you're on more of a tighter budget. Exactly. Um, you know, for, for a big budget, like I'm an X-Men completionist. I know I've you probably already are just sitting there going, oh, Jesus, shut up. Um, but when I started doing it, my my was, you know, I started buying back issues as a teen because I wanted to read backwards from where I started the comic. So I and then it went to, well, I'll just read from the Claremont. You know, I want to get all of the Claremont run of X-Men. And then it's expanded to, well. There's only 93 issues in giant sized before the Claremont run. And I'm still reading stuff after that. Well, I can, I slowly started expanding, but strategically, I probably did a poor, I probably made a poor decision there because by the time I, I finished that whole Claremont run and got from 94 to 280, um, the, the books from, you know, one through 93 had continued appreciating in value and now became kind of probably out of my price range. Um, so you do have to have a focus or you will end up either chasing markets. You will end up chasing, um, chasing hot books you end up with fomo over time that fear of missing out on the one thing that you didn't buy right now so you got to decide what's your budget what's your long-term goals on this and then either stick with it or leave yourself enough wiggle room so that if you decide to change your focus later you don't end up with a lot of stuff that you then have to offload in order to, because if you want to get like an entire run of Spider-Man or X-Men or Batman, and you think you're going to do it for a reasonable amount of money, you're, you're sorely mistaken. But then you decide, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to switch to all um, just key books. I'm only going to buy the key books. Well, now you're five years later. Those books have gone up in, in value over those five years. Um, 
at whatever rate they've gone up, sometimes big, sometimes small. And now you're left going, oh, well, shit, I sh- if I would have done this first, if I would have bought those big issues first, I would have got them cheaper because the dollar bin books that are easily accessible, easily found right now are still going to be dollar bin books five years from now. But that, you know, Detective 20 might be the dollar 50 bin then. Yeah, they might be a dollar 50. Ooh, wow. You, <laughs> you, you, you lost 50 cents. Yeah, you might end up with there's might be 200 in the run you want. So it ends up being an extra hundred bucks. But that, you know, giant sized X-Men went from 500 to 900. So, Doc, you were talking earlier about having FOMO and chasing the hot books or whatever. There are a lot of uh, YouTube channels out there. There are a lot of websites talking about what are the hot comic books this week. There's announcement by the MCU that this character is going to make their first appearance or this character is supposed to be like the big central character in the DCU and all of a sudden their first appearances or maybe key stories that are supposedly or rumored to be parts of those universes all of a sudden are kind of hot. Would you suggest going out there and trying to be a part of that crowd? Because it it changes pretty much daily. Exactly. It, it does. And I do not suggest being in that crowd. You're If you're not ahead of the curve, then you are more than likely going to end up being left holding, holding the bag on these books. Um, you know, a lot of these, the, these price spikes on, on books that were, you know, $5, $10 and suddenly become 50 and a hundred dollar books oftentimes are due to um, market perception, hype, and if you get caught up in there, those books are never going to be worth what they were before that. They're going to they're never going to go back down to that. If they were a ten dollar book and they spike up to a hundred dollar book, they're never going to go back to a ten dollar book. But they'll probably settle out at some point, kind of like a wave coming in. That that in you know they they were ten, they were real low. Then a wave comes in, brings it up to a hundred. Well, that wave's eventually going to crash. You don't want to be buying at the high end of the market. I mean, it's basic, you know, stock market stuff here. Of you know, buy high, sell. You know, you don't want to buy high and sell low. You want to buy low, sell high. So. You don't want to go chasing trends. You either want to be in front of the trend or you want to wait for the trend to kind of flatten out and find its new, I guess, balancing point. And and so what I recommend for people that are seeing these books become hot and then not be, you know, and then come back down to earth a little bit. um, I mean, I, I recommend looking at what are their plans yeah, this book became hot because it got announced for a movie or a TV show. So look four, five, six movies down the line. Think of what characters might be getting added. What what direction you see that, like the 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 film universe or the TV universe going in? Oh, are they focusing more on uh, cosmic characters? Go try to find cosmic characters that haven't been announced yet. You can still find probably a lot of those characters for cheap. You know, $2, $5, $10. Pick those books up now, like four or five movies down the line, so that when the announcement does happen, you're making a very small investment. Theoretically, you might be able to you know, sell a couple of copies if you pick up multiple copies, or you then have something that's worth more after that wave hits, after it comes through, even if you only get one. If you only buy one, now you're at least not chasing trends. You're you got to stay ahead of the market or you wait for the market to balance back out. But you definitely don't want to be getting caught chasing trends. That's the worst possible thing you can do. I mean, unless you just like losing okay, money. What I like to do is I like to to find a character that is more obscure. Like if you want to be a Hawkman completionist, you could do that for a relatively low amount of money in comparison to a lot of the other characters in the DC universe or DC comics universe that have been around at that for that length of time. He hasn't had that many of appearances uh, in comparison to like a green lantern or a flash or something like that. Or another cool thing that I think is a lot of fun is to find a smaller publisher that was pretty cool. Like maybe a Malibu or Valiant, like the original Valiant and go and try to find those because they have cool characters. A lot of the stories are good. You had Jim shooter and a lot of great writers on Valiant And you can actually go out and collect those and get all the major characters in the entire run. And you're not going to sit there and put yourself in enormous amounts of debt. And you'll get a cool, complete run that you can talk about. Absolutely. Especially if you're just looking for something that's going to be kind of a contained story. I mean, it might be 
10, 15 years of story worth, but it's still contained and you could buy it up cheap, especially defunct properties. Um, and there's always, you, you're going to, you're not going to be paying anywhere near the amount. And there's always the possibility that five years, 10 years from now, there's going to be some sort of, you know, renaissance on that character. And suddenly, you know, like Bloodshot a few years ago, whenever the Vin Diesel movie got announced, you know, all of a sudden, all those early 90s Bloodshot books that up until then were dollar bin books. You know, you could find them in 50 cent bins littered around the country. Suddenly they went up to 10, 15 dollars. Um, but you got a cool story out of it. Whether you decide to flip it whenever you know an announcement does get made, if there's a renaissance or a revival on one of those those properties. Now, obviously, Malibu, unlikely because Marvel still owns it. But Valiant, Valiant's gone through what, like three iterations now? Mm-hmm. Um and Not you know it's and it's gonna happen again it, it, it's gonna have another renaissance it's gonna have another revival and pick the stuff up while it's cheap um i mean look it's it's basic buy sell buy low principles on this and so you're not gonna especially with smaller publishers, you're definitely not going to get caught in the Marvel DC or even like spawn waves and waves and waves of, well, this character is going to be in a movie now. And this character is going to be in a movie now because they're not that kind of global, um, you know, in the, the cultural zeitgeist the same way. So if we want to look at like a lot of people are doing newer stuff, Marvel and DC, and even the smaller publishers are trying to make the new comics more collectible like the old comics. They're actually trying to compete with the back issue market by making things more collectible. That's why we're seeing so many first appearances of new characters that are actually just replicas of old characters. So many, uh, you know, um, variant co- uh, exclusive variant covers and stuff like that. Would you suggest people go out there and get on board and try and get the first appearances of these new characters and maybe, you know, get the $50, you know, one in 50 variant? Absolutely not. First of all, those variants rarely hold value. Um, Periodically, they might, especially you you need to pay attention to who the artist is and whether or not that artist is going to have, um, you know, really staying power. Like, um, you, you know, like a J Scott Campbell variant of a new character on a new book, maybe, but only if it's through the publisher, the stuff through his store, they, they look beautiful and everything, but they're generally don't hold that much value. And even then you're still looking at large quantities of these books. They're not anywhere near as rare as anyone would like you to believe. So I really don't recommend going out and chasing those, getting those chase variants. Um, They rarely hold value and you're going to be throwing for every one that actually is going to go up in value. There's going to be 10 other generic knockoff characters that get introduced so that they don't have to pay royalties to somebody else um, that you're going to end up buying too. that end up just being a money suck because six months from now, eight months from now, it's selling at $10 instead of $50. So now you've lost $40 on 10 books and you gained, you know, so that's 400 bucks, but you gained a hundred bucks on the one book that actually did it. So you're still minus 300. You mentioned something interesting there, doc. It's something that you could pay attention to. We can't really anymore because we don't see the sales data, but if you want to look for new characters, what I would suggest and what makes sense to me and what I've, I've talked to some experts have done this, you need to check out the, the print run. Like Naomi is a sucky comic book. They try to make the TV show. It didn't really work. But the first appearance of Naomi, the print run on that comic book is literally 13500 Yes, It is really, really small in comparison to what you would expect from a DC or a Marvel character in their first appearance. So that comic book actually ends up being pretty desirable, whether you like Naomi or not. Whereas if you buy some of the Spawn stuff that Todd McFarlane recently released, where we have first appearances of these new versions of Spawns, those are over 130000 While the character might be cooler, you might like the character more, it's going to be less collectible because the print run is almost 10 times more than Naomi. Absolutely, especially for modern books. Um, Anything published in the last 25 to 30 years, collectability is 
virtually nothing. And it's because everybody had kind of already gotten the collector's mindset. The The newsstand market was basically dead. It was almost exclusively a direct market, which are really catering to hardcore readers. Um, so the print run is really what matters. You can go out, finding a copy of Naomi is is in really good condition in like nine, eight condition, nine, six, nine, eight condition is going to be a lot harder, honestly, than even finding a copy of Hulk 181 in, in that great condition, because you've got 13,000 total copies printed. That's not even what's sold. That's just what was published and sold to to stores. A lot of it ended up littering back issue bins or ended up sold off to, you know, a half price books or whatever, whenever the the stores weren't able to actually unload uh, onto the customers. So they ended up just kind of ditching the, the, the back issues. Now, some of them might have stayed and ended up going into the back issue market, but there's 250,000 copies of Hulk 181. It was pub- there was a quarter million copies published. So you can actually probably find just as many 98 Naomi's as you can find 98 Hulk 181s if not more Naomi's because it's 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 a harder book to find whereas Hulk 181 is published in the 70s. It's it's plentiful, but a lot of them it wasn't bought up by hardcore collectors. It was through the newsstand. It was bought by kids that would roll it up and stick it in their back pocket when riding home from the bicycle, like riding home on a bicycle from, from the liquor, you know, the pharmacy or the corner store. So they didn't take as much care of it. Whereas anybody that was buying books from the direct market is probably taking a lot better care of their books. So, so pre run the matter. Direct market. Speaking of the direct market, you're probably going to have to go into your local comic book shop. I would say it's a bad sign, Doc, if you go into the back issue portion of your comic shop, you see the comic books, and there's no prices on them. Oh, absolutely. If if that, if you're walking into a shop that they don't price their back issues, leave. I, I'm, I'm not. Because they're just going to go to eBay and screw you over with the highest price possible. You are going to spend three out two hours one hour two hours three hours four hours digging through their back issue bins to pull out all these great books that they don't even realize they have there because they're too lazy with their own inventory to go through and pull out this stuff find it keep track of it and then price it and then when you bring it up to the counter they're going to spend another 30 minutes scouring ebay for what the best sold that's assuming i mean your best chance is they go to the sold price. A lot of times I've seen them even go to what it's for sale price as, you know, okay, well, fine. It's, it's for sale for $500. Ain't nobody buying it. It's a $3 comic, but they will, they will sit there and then they will price everything. And then you just worked for them for three hours to find their valuable shit so that they can then mark it up and sell it to the next schmuck that walks through the door. You just worked for them for free. That's all you did. Is there anything else that, you know, uh, new collectors going into the back issue uh, uh, market within their comic book shop should give them bad juju when they see it in the shop that maybe should be a warning sign that says, this is the shop for you? Um, I, I'd say anywhere where if 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 you walk in and you and you look at some of the books on look at their wall books first to see whether or not they're even remotely priced reasonably. If they're asking, you know, $500 for a beat to shit copy of, um, you know, like X-Men 100 or even, you know, a, a really just destroyed copy of amazing spider-man 300 and they got like one or two decent wall books that are wildly overpriced just walk out of the store it's it's not worth it and anyone where they don't even say hi to you if, they, if they're not just like hey man how you doing that they're they are not going to be inter- interested in any sort of negotiation and that's that's the other thing you can do walk in and be like hey man are all your prices just firm if they say yes okay Cool. At least then you know. So you want to haggle if you can. 
absolutely haggle you when you bundle can. if you can doc you bundle everything in you can get a little discount the more books you buy from a store look and see if they have any promotions there's one shop that i have here that i absolutely love because they have a they have their what they call their 50 50 promotion you buy 50 back issues and everything you bought is 50 percent off so you get 50 percent off so you could go and buy a lot like 48 really you know 49 you know dollar bin back issues and then one fifty dollar book and you don't even have to haggle for the 25 bucks off on that 50 dollar book you just got it for 25 bucks it's a really really nice program and it helps them turn over their inventory so i would go in find a bunch of stuff that you really like and then find a couple of books that might be even if they are overpriced guess what now you're getting it at a discount because you're bundling it in with the other books and you can probably afford to go and buy a lot more if you're going to fill in a run if you're going to um just try to find some obscure issues from some other book if you're following some creator whatever your focus is you could really you know make use of any of the store promotions ask them if they have any promotions like that uh they're they're really fun and it lets them move into inventory and it lets you knock out a big chunk of your watch list or your want list really easy all right so the last thing we'll talk about is the app that you use we don't need the 45 minute explanation doc because i know you love this thing but just tell them what the app is and what they can use it for and how it helps you collect your back issues um the app that i primarily use is clz comics just clz it is a generally it's it's a cloud-based database that has is it available for android and, or iphone it is available for both android and iphone and um uh windows and mac os so you can have a desktop version and a mobile version of it it will store your inventory on the cloud it has uh uses your camera on your phone as a barcode reader it pulls from a cloud database puts all the information in and it's crowdsourced so if some of the information on a book may be wrong you can then submit those changes to the you know the the core database and it will update them after it's reviewed it's really wonderful it doesn't take up a whole hell of a lot of space on your phone i think it's about 15 dollars as an annual subscription rate it's eminently cheaper than so many other of the big inventory programs out there and it's great for the individual collector it might not work so well for like a store but as an individual collector you keep your uh, inventory, your want list, your uh, if you've sold something, if you have material for sale, if you're just selling, you know, a couple of books out of your, if you lend a trade paperback to your buddy, you can mark it in there. Hey, that's where I went that to. Um, and you can part put in where you have it stored in your collection. If it's in filing cabinets, if it's on a bookshelf, um, it's wonderful. And you can add custom art for the, uh, you know each of the books you can organize it however you want you can change it from uh series by creator you can look up all kinds of information on it it's wonderful i highly recommend it i believe there's a uh free trial version that lets you put in like 50 or 100 comics you can try it test it see if you like it and if you do buy the subscription it's wonderful i love it we have talked about comic book collecting in the past specifically. We talked about the do's and don'ts and how to keep your collection in pristine condition. What should you be doing to protect your back issues and make sure they don't get mildew, get ruined, and you and you keep them in peak condition? Definitely check this video out. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.